Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Beer and Video Games Variety Show. And what is hopefully redemption for Shadow of the Colossus. Yeah, you know, uh, I'm not... I'm not really convinced that there's ever a true redemption story. Um, but this is the closest thing we can get. Yeah, and we'll, and we'll see if this... Uh, if this is well behaved, I guess. <clears throat> so... Uh, we're doing this in the middle of a work day. Oh, God. And so we are not drinking. <laughs> <laughs> but don't worry. Uh, this will not be a normal yeah. thing. <laughs> if this show ever attacks our work ethic, go ahead and quote this part right here. We are not drinking because exactly. it's a work day. It's a work day. Yeah, or Yeah. Yeah, well, we'll leave it at that. It's a work day. We're not drinking. So this is not optimal FPS, but it is but it, playable. Yeah, it's, it is it's playable. not the worst thing I've ever seen. Yeah. This isn't like... Uh, it's a little tricky. Yeah. And therefore, I will not be playing. Uh, <laughs> that's the reason. <laughs> yeah. That, that's one of the reasons. Uh, okay. So... Praise the sun. Yeah, praise the sun. And... What were we talking about last time, if we could... Uh, well, we were talking about the spiritual aspects. We were talking about, like, the lightness. We were talking about, uh, well, the lightness in relation to the darkness. Uh, but also one of the things that I kind of wanted to... Horsemanship. We talked about horsemanship. Horsemanship in this game played. is shit, dude. I hate riding the horse. For this very reason. This isn't going to happen, is it? What do you mean? Are, are we going to be able to... Uh, keep on going with this the frame rate looks pretty pretty terra let's just let's let's get outside the temple and see what it looks like okay um one of the things that i, I really was looking forward to talking about is like how f at the same time this game is like incredibly minimalistic yeah, see? but it's so freaking huge it's vast it's vast man and in its vastness uh it, it is very minimalistic which is kind of an odd thing to Look say. Look at that, baby. Yeah, there you go. Now that is just a freaking example of how concept art can really beat out high horsepower graphics, you know? Mm -hmm. It just looks goddamn beautiful. Yeah, it is, it's aesthetic, bro. Yeah, man. There's a blue... I mean, there's a bloom on everything. Everything is freaking bright and... It is the light that blinds, which, you know, seeing as how the main protagonist or antagonist in this, that god figure you're talking to, is represented by just a light. Mm. Ah, it's beautiful. Getting text. Oh, yeah, so for those of you who see my Han Solo get up, <laughs> uh... The, we, the, I, I the, have to wear this. The god of our computer <laughs> demands <laughs> a yeah. change of wardrobe sometimes. Yeah, so our chroma key was all messed up, and the only way that we could re reconfigure it to make it so that the green screen doesn't look like a pile of shit yeah. is for me to put this over my my regular shirt. Yeah. And I don't like it. Because <laughs> for those of you who don't know, uh, Bear Shop's at the Baby Gap. <laughs> so, uh... You know, enough said. I, I do not shop at the Baby Gap. Uh, I'm somewhere between, like, I don't know. Well, nah, never mind. <laughs> no thoughts. <laughs> no thoughts. It's a, The Andrew Cochran day. story. There we go. I mean, Jack. <laughs> we'll bleep that out, right? Yeah, just bleep it out. <laughs> You're not going to believe it out. <laughs> I'm going to get fired. <laughs> and when, when I lose my job, I'm, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to stab you in the jugular. You're going to come over here and drink and play video games. That's, like exactly, you do. that's exactly what I'm going to do. Who am I kidding? You know me too well. Being bombarded with text, bro. It's inappropriate. We're here to talk about majesty. Yeah. <laughs> and there it is that's the majesty 
some good stuff. Yeah, man. So, you know, I, I said praise the sun earlier. And I, I'm always struck by, like, how much certain aspects of this game actually do remind me of Dark Souls. Another highly aesthetic game. Well, I prefer this one in terms of the visuals. The aesthetic. The a <laughs> the <laughs> not to be confused with anesthetic. No. Burke. Get not and Burke not Burke. In. Not, not Burke, Burke Chesterton. Chesterton. Kenneth. Chesterton. Kenneth Chesterton <laughs> Burke. Uh, what a majestic creature it is. I know. Let's go stab it in the face. Shut up. <laughs> we shoot it first. Okay. It's coming right at us! Get it, Skeeter. Eh! There you go. Yeah, you know, I, did, I didn't notice the birds. That's uh, that's how you tell where, where whales are. Really? Oh, uh, yeah, that's a true. Of birds on the water. Yeah. And actually, that's brought up in Moby Dick. So, this is your white whale, brother. Shit. You know I said that white whale. I knows it. I see now. Ah! That's right. Love it. He doesn't care. No, he's, he's like, like, dog, I got a club. He's taking uh, arrow shots to the dome. Oh, oh, shite. Oh, don't die. Don't die. There you go. So. Dog death is not the worst thing. Nope. Camera angles are the worst thing. <laughs> not like Silent Hill, bro. Oh, God. Silent Hill's camera angles are just the worst. Just revolutionary. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is, I'm not reminded enough of Hitchcock for me to be like, <laughs> to be able to forgive some of those awful camera angles. Well, only God forgives, dog. True. Now... That's how you want to direct. We're, we're hitting some hard that's movie references want, here. Yeah, that's right. For those of you watching this, get these references. I like you. <laughs> Ask for. Yeah. That's that's you're this. You're just a dingleberry right now. Yeah, bro. that that is this uh, Colossus's uh, Achilles heel. He has a furry ass, and maybe <laughs> if he would do some upkeep on his body. This wouldn't have happened. Yeah. You would have had no access point. But... Yeah. I, I didn't actually know this game is about uh, media portrayal of body image. Yeah. yeah. Well, most things are. Most things are about that. <laughs> <laughs> In the synopsis, it mentions, it mentions yeah. those uh, themes. Yeah. Stab them in the dome! Ah! Oof. That got him. Ooh. He, I, he bleeds Miyazaki. Oh yeah, he does. I love I love how much they bleed. It just like just continuous. Well, it's just like the same thing as a Ninja Gaiden where you know ninjas are made of 110% pressurized blood. <laughs> <laughs> so are Colossi. I love just water spouts of blood. <laughs> Tickles me in like the best way possible. Yeah. And there goes the first Colossi. Colossus. Colossi. <laughs> Colossi. <laughs> Boom. Miyazaki. Yeah. This... That's actually kind of an interesting way to look at this game. Like, what if Miyazaki did this game? Like, what, what are the correlations we see happening? Well, I mean, you got some tentacles right there coming at you. Yeah, go straight it's Nausicaa. Like, no, it's like a, it's like the boar, in um, uh, Mononoke. Yeah, the, one, the ones that uh, wrap around Ashitaka's hand and yeah, you know, it grows, becomes more and more a part of him. Yeah, what do the uh, what do the creatures usually represent in in a Miyazaki film, and, and how do we well, see you, that you, correlation? You, you know, it, it, it's hard to. It's hard to make a blanket statement about the creatures uh, because I, I think that, you know, like in a... You, there are more parallels between uh, Na Nausicaa 
mm-hmm. and Mononoke than say Mononoke and like Spirited Away. Yeah, you know. But um, I, I mean, there but, are some blanket themes that show up in Miyazaki. Well, movies. right, and I mean, like you, usually, oh, I love the blur, the very, the very Kojima yeah. angle here, actually. Kojima Zaki. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You want that? The the end of art. Like <laughs> yeah. everybody Nobody just has stopped. To do anything yeah. anymore. We got there. We made it, guys. <laughs> we made it. It's been uh it's been one hell of a trip, but we yeah. don't need, we don't need to do anything. We else. spent our entire lives, or rather, college careers, studying the Western canon. But fuck it, put two Japanese guys together, and, and they just we, end it. We just <laughs> we don't need it anymore. So, uh, going back to the yeah. animal things, uh, especially with Nausicaa and with Mononoke, they're both, you know, the. Uh, well, you know, the embodiment of, of nature and the natural, and the thing that I like about it is that although it's clear that Miyazaki thinks that um, that the symbols of nature also embody, like, goodness and uh, benevolence and all, yeah. that, all that stuff, but there, there's a violence inherent to the uh, to the the symbols he uses. Yeah, well, you know, well I, I think the, it, the, it's the, a response. The you know, violence right? uh, in in terms of deities in his movies are generally only in response to violent humans because they're almost right. never well, right. unnecessarily violent towards, right. and, and they're not even really violent towards each other very much. R- well, yeah, and I, what I'm trying, I guess, what I'm yeah. just trying to say is like it it they they also look at the. Uh, like the the naturalistic response mm. of you know like humans as an invasive species. Um, now the the only thing about that though is that in something like uh, Spirited Away, um, the animals are obviously like, very different. They mm. I think that they're you know they're proxies for certain characteristics of of humans. Yeah, uh, you know, like the fr- the frogs are uh, usually like. Let's see, what are the frogs usually like? Mouth breathers. Well, like they're the, the the one frog that I think of like right off the bat is the uh, is the one that's smoking the cigar, and like you, you remember which frog I'm talking about? Vaguely, I think it's a frog. I mean, obviously, it's easier to look at. You know what? You know, nice there's there's rate. pigs and like the pigs are yeah. all gluttonous and all that obvious stuff, um, but yeah, like yeah, I know how to say it, buddy. Each each animal kind of represents a certain aspect of of you know human characteristics, I guess, and is hy- hyperbolized. <clears throat> Actually, uh, I think my favorite character in all of Miyazaki is. Uh, What's his name? Isn't it No Face? Yeah, No Face. Love He's No Face. Corrupted, yeah. I love when uh, when he's following Sen on the train tracks. Yeah. Great scene. When he, uh... <laughs> 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 like, like, the little gold chips. Yeah. I, I think that's a... I think that's a really good way to contextualize what's happening with the Colossi in this game. Mm. You know, they're all, they're actually all really goddamn peaceful until you go bother them. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, we we are to assume that these colossi have been here untouched for hundreds of years. They're not planning some grand invasion. They're not all um, closing in on this temple to it, kill anything. Yeah, just, yeah they're, they're, they're just living. They're, they're not, they're, there's not like a unified plan to do something like you, you, you they, they just they're all independent you know, i mean just... for actually a lot of the time you get to them and they wake up like <laughs> you, they're sleeping they're just sleepy guys the big old snorlax oh god there we go oh where am i going where are you, where are you oh going? there's the land bridge over where, there where are you going why are you, why are you doing that look what <laughs> there wouldn't be a cast without one of us saying liquid. Nope. Liquid. I'm telling you, next time we do a, a Metal Gear game, we need to dress up like that. 
which pretty much just entails you taking your shirt off mm. and me putting on a bandana. Yeah. And I think people want to see that. I think so, too. We'll get real deep into the the musical section, you know? Yeah. I think we'll uh, do Are some like, tap dancing and some other things. I'm going to use my sword. Use that sword. Here you go, dog. Right there. Boom, right there. Is that a land bridge? I think, I think so. It's a real shame that we can't get the, uh, the sound working on this. What do you mean? I mean, there's, there's no sound. The first time we cast it, there was no sound. Oh, okay. I mean, so we're working with, like, uh, ooh, the bird again. There we go. I really hope we're entertaining. Yeah. <laughs> this might be a really fucking boring episode. Yeah, well, this is, uh, this is a sad attempt at our redemption, so. Yeah. If we don't try, then we're no better than the Colossi. Sleeping all day. Yeah. Not going to work. I'm okay. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> As I scamper back off to work <laughs> in, uh, what now, an hour? No, 30 minutes. Mm. 30 minutes. How many Colossi can we kill? Two tops. Two tops. Oof, what's that? Oh, who knows? Maybe it was just a ground quake. Maybe. I don't believe in earthquakes. Uh, it's not an earthquake. This isn't an earthquake. Sorry, I, I... It's a ground quake. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, maybe there are no tectonic plates on this uh, this planet for some reason. It's a gas planet. Mmm. I see a lot of evidence for that. Me too, especially the rocks. <laughs> <laughs> they are methane rocks, actually. <laughs> Needless to say, it is not the best smelling planet. No. A bunch of horses running around. Yeah. This is what happens. A bunch of fart jokes. <laughs> Scientific fart jokes. That's right. Very video games TV. <laughs> Where you can get drunk and be educational. And talk about Miyazaki in terms of a colossus. <laughs> and then gas planets. Yeah, we don't... We actually don't have anything else to say about this game. We just want to talk about Miyazaki films now. <laughs> We're going to, uh, now I think we just need to make a Ponyo game. Ponyo! Yeah, that, that's my least favorite Miyazaki movie. Me, uh, yeah, I, I agree. Not, wasn't a fan. Really boring. Uh, I liked, I liked the, uh, the watercolor. I thought that it really worked with the story. Yeah. Uh, especially that, you know, like, watercolor is usually, like, you know, baby's first painting. Baby's first. And, uh, you know, obviously the kid's a kid. <laughs> so it, it, it works. Logic of Miyazaki movie. Kid is kid. <laughs> Only not. I know. <laughs> because, For uh, real, every Miyazaki movie is kid is not kid is kid again. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. You know, the thing that I, I like about his kids, especially the one in Ponyo in particular, is that he has gray hair. <laughs> it's wonderful. And he does go through, like, a you know, real coming-of-age thing, mm. you know, like going off on his little boat on his own his and all boat. that. All that stuff. Uh, did you see The Secret World of Arietti? I know that's, that, that's not technically means no. like canon, but he, he directed it, right? He didn't write it or something. I, I, I can't remember. Actually, I'm a purist. Yeah. I'm just kidding. I just didn't watch it. That was a good movie, too. Very, very Miyazaki. Uh, secret. Uh, oh, he didn't like that. He didn't like that at all. He's like, dog, get your frame rate under control before you shoot at me. Okay, he did not direct it. What did he do? Oh, okay, he, he wrote the screenplay. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. That's a... Another heartbreaking Miyazaki tale of, you know, children dying and stuff. <laughs> Figuratively. Uh, <laughs> no! <laughs> well... Uh, seriously. 
the uh, the kid is like in in like some relative's house because he's terminally ill. Mm. Good stuff. Well, if we're taking the uh, Baudrillardian approach, the symbolic death is worse than the actual death, Oof. which is why he's an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care what that you're dead. I care what your death means. That's right. Oh, I'm right in front of you, baby. And shoot you in the dome. Right in the mouth. In the dome diddly. Right in the mouthpiece of the grill. It's the grill. In the grill. The grill. The grill. I'm gonna shoot your hook. Come on, posture. Posture. Shoot in the eye. He doesn't want to be shot in the eye. Shoot in the eye. Punish him. Do it. Get on your ramparts, bro. Do it. Oh, shit. That's the one. Get it, son. Oh! Baby cakes. Some people call me baby cakes. Dun -dun -dun. Me, I call me baby cakes. Dun -dun -dun. Go together like shoes and feet. <laughs> Where do I get I on this guy? I was just thinking about uh, when we were in Qingdao. And he did cat people. Cat people but, run. Yeah, but, but, but he started like really high. Like, cat people run. Run like the wind. Cat people screw. Screw like the wind. Yeah, no, I'm only no one. Didn't want to let him in. <laughs> Bringing it down. We're just like, what? what? Why? Why did you start that high? Don't tell me you didn't enjoy it. Oh, no, I enjoyed it thoroughly. Thoroughly. That's right. Oh fuck. Chipotle. <laughs> Chipotle way. Chipotopla. <laughs> and you're dead. Falling off a colossus. Breaking your back. Getting stepped on. No. That's not how we do. Is that true? It's true. Uh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, we, we talked about this being more of a puzzle game than an action game. Yeah. They're actually very liberal with your life. Like, it's it's actually pretty hard to die in this game. You can get frustrated really, <laughs> really easily. Which is why they say death is not the worst thing. Yeah. Frustration is the worst thing. Yeah. Getting stabbed in, in your tram stamp is <laughs> the worst thing. <laughs> Oh, he Dude. just got sprayed in the, the face. face with freaking tramp stamp blood. Get him in the circle. Get him in the circle. Oh. Uh, speaking of death and getting really frustrated, uh. I remember uh, just uh, playing Dark Souls the second time around and uh, giving it a good old-fashioned college try. <laughs> Man, those were some dark times for me. <laughs> oh my lord. I think that I, I've i maybe talked about my experience with Dark Souls on the stream a little bit. Probably. But uh, the one that was just like fucking soul crushing to me was uh, these these two bosses you have to fight at the same time, or Steam and Snow. Oh. We all know how you feel about them. God, how many times did I throw my controller? Oof. Not not good for anyone. <laughs> I'm like in my room and anybody passing by would be like, what? What's going on in there? <laughs> well, hey. <laughs> oh, God. So bad, man. Got my ass kicked so many times. Aside, make... aside from them, though, you can basically exploit every fucking boss in that game, and it's, it makes it it makes for some uninteresting gameplay at, at at moments. Like, really, I think that the the yeah. part that re that requires either strategy or an awareness of timing is in the spaces between bosses. You know, uh, we definitely need to do an episode on Dark Souls just so I could voice my very anti-Dark Souls opinion. Yeah. yeah. I could articulate it. Now's not the time. No. But I hate that game. 
You can't just say that and then and then yeah. leave it there. Well, it gets hype. So much hype. Okay. Oh, I hate this shirt. That's how you drop a Colossus. Why? Han? Yeah. What's wrong? I don't like it. I don't like... You don't like being a... Uh, I don't like linen shirts with short sleeves. Roguish. <laughs> Very roguish. Yeah. There is that. Yeah. That component is nice, I think. Oh, uh, Miyazaki. You're about no. to get Miyazaki. Boom. Ah, Boom. Ah, Ashi Taco. I love the uh, the old like witch doctor lady who tells him he's gonna die. Yeah. With a smile on her face, mm. like hey, you're possessed by a demon. It's going to hurt a lot, and then you're going to die. <laughs> He's just this, like, is, this is what the, the leaf, the red stone, yeah. and the twig tell me. Yeah. <laughs> and he's just like, that, that's a lot to drop on a kid, man. I like, don't... And, then, and then she's like, you know what else you're going to have to do? <laughs> you're going to have to fucking cut off your t- ponytail and never come back. <laughs> <laughs> Not only are you going to die in pain, we don't like you anymore. You need to leave. I know, like, everything you know and love yeah. is in this, like, you know, 20 square mile you know, enclave. Enclave. But uh, that all goes away for you. That all goes <laughs> away. On the bright side, you're going to meet a very nubile. Mm. She-wolf. <laughs> She-wolf. But also a human. A she-wolf who, when you kiss her, it tastes like Wiehenstaffner. Ah! Yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, boy, I like that. I like it a lot because I like Mononoke and I like Vihan Stoffner. Yeah. So if those things can be together... Oh, God, you in some tired. Sort of we had coffee, man. Thinly veiled <laughs> uh, analogy for something else. You know, I, I don't like the full veil. And I don't like an absence of a veil. I just like the thin veil. You want, you want, I want to, some mystery. You want to accentuate the ambiguity. That's right. That, that's Because it's all about the nuance. That's what it's all about, folks. That's what it's all about. And this game actually has a very thin veil of light throughout the game. Yeah, bro. The light veils things the instead light of the darkness. Things. The darkness is the only thing you can trust in this damn game. <laughs> Not that. Like, what's the, outside that window? The Miyazaki tentacles, bro. Oh no! Trust them. You gotta trust them. Yeah, uh, you should never tell a Japanese person to trust a tentacle. That's true. You're gonna get into a lot of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. How much time do we have left? All right, you got 20 minutes to down the next Colossus. Oh, what are you gonna do? I don't think I could do it. Is it the one with the big sword? Yeah, the sword. Yeah, the sword. Oh, Moo Moo, come here. <laughs> Mumu! What's the horse's name again? Agro! <laughs> Agro! Ah! 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 <laughs> God, God dang horse! <laughs> oh, come on! Mount with... <laughs> I, can't, I can't even speak! <laughs> Mount the horse with propane and propane <laughs> accessories. That horse ain't right. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> I used to be able to do that so well. Man. I used to watch a lot of King of the Hill, actually. And it took me forever to like it and to appreciate it. Yeah. But then once I did, I couldn't get enough of it. I really had I watched to... that show for like three hours at a time. I really had to warm up to that show, too. I hated it when they put it on Adult Swim. Yeah, I did too. I was really upset. I was like, this is, a, this is a waste of 30 minutes. Yeah. This could be filled with something productive. Yeah. Now, I don't think I ever got to the point where you did with it, but I, yeah, I, I, did, started I did begin watching. to. It was really uh, weird. I did begin to enjoy it. So, speaking of I, old I, school I can't, adult swim. binge watch any comedy show. Because mm. mm. it's episodic. Yeah. And I'm very Aristotelian. I know. Don't you know I know? Anyway, what about... This is the the best episode. I love this game so much, and we're not talking about it at all. Yeah. 
What was your favorite Adult Swim <laughs> lineup, or like some of your Adult Swim shows that you've liked over the years? Um, you know which show I liked because it was so incredibly obscure that when I saw it, I felt special, like I was the only one watching. Is a show called Super Milk Chen. Mm-hmm. Do you remember that one? Mm-hmm. So weird. Like, the the pacing of the dialogue and the jokes are just so obscure that it's hypnotic. <laughs> I like the... Some of my fondest memories of Adult Swim are for a, a show that I hate in retrospect. But I felt like... Uh, uh, I felt ahead of my time... When we were, when, uh, it was screening, like, Inuyasha for the first time. You know, it was, like, the first American airing of Inuyasha. Yeah. I'd never heard of it before. It was just on. And, like, the first season, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm all for this. But I'm all then, about this. But then it doesn't go anywhere. And you're just like, w- w- wait, what? You want the <laughs> definition of episodic. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, it's, it's really bad. Yeah, and I think the premise is good. Yeah, it's very whimsical. Like it's escapist. Yeah, and that you know? was that was the thing too. I really I really liked that yeah. about uh, Inuyasha. I thought that it was structured very well yeah. with the the break between the feudalistic Japan and the yeah uh, oh god modern day Japan and going back and forth. I I appreciated that, but it got to a point where it was like less about that and more about yeah just. And Yasha get, getting into situations. So I'm I'm uh, I'm bound to link all of our side conversations to this game. <laughs> so how are we entered into the fantastic in this game? How how does that work? How is the world built in a way that that makes us love it so? Well, uh, it's it's kind of like uh, there's a certain Okay, okay, so basically, like, this ver- this operates a lot like a silent film. Right. And, uh... And, and, and for people watching, that's exactly what yeah. it's... Uh, but, but, but the thing with the silent film is that because it doesn't rely on dialogue, it relies on utilizing visual tropes that you will... Like, you will piece together what's going on. And it's playing off of your expectation and the mythos. And so, you know, you automatically assume this is the good guy. This yeah. is what he's doing. He's yeah. doing this to take down this. And that's, because those are the pieces that you have. Yeah. And, and those are pieces that you're going to see across movies and video games. Video games in particular, go kill the big bad guy. You know, right. that's almost always the plot for any game of any genre. Right. I mean, like, it's, it's it definitely started off, like, you know, like the heyday of Mario. Yeah. You know, games copying Mario. Go beat Mario up and, Donkey Kong. Yeah. Like... <laughs> The very first one. So, I mean, um, we know what to do by now. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's flipped on its head by the end, which we talked about already. Yeah. But um, it's in one way helpful to look at this as if it were a silent film, but it's also more difficult because the music is so yeah, and, goddamn good. Yeah, and, and that's really a, the shame of this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it really sucks that we, we can't stream the music because it, it is lovely. Very adventurous and sparse when it needs to be. Yeah, it it's just... It's, it so perfectly meshes with the visual aesthetic, you know? It's yeah. like... It, uh... I don't know, it's just... It's great. I was just... Uh, I was watching... I forget what director was saying this, but he uses... Or if it was a game developer, but the absence of music is a very aesthetic choice because sometimes you hear silence more than music when you've been listening to music you know you only hear the difference it was it was a game developer yeah it was the only thing about that though is that you have to utilize that tool i think with Uh, with much more uh, skill and reserve than using your music because, like, music is always going to be part of of your your game well, you or your movie. Well, you can't go full silence. We're yeah, talking about or, scenes. Or, yeah, and that, that's the thing. Like, you can... 
you can utilize silence in certain scenes, but the thing is, is that if you keep on using that device, mm-hmm. you're automatically going to create a pattern in your viewer's mind yeah. that associates silence like with this emotion yeah. or something. And then you could choose to break that pattern. Just yeah, you know, and I mean that that's cool. And if if the point is doing that, then yeah, yeah but. I think Something that, uh, Kubrick did in 2001 a lot with the uh, sound the monolith makes. Yeah. And you don't even realize, like, but you, you get this feeling. It's, it's very unsettling that music comes on. Yeah. More of a white noise, really. Mm, yeah, it's a like a low frequency. Yeah. Like, like just hum. Uh, speaking of speaking of 2001, the last time I saw it was on a. It was in a theater in in San Diego. That must have been amazing. Oh, fuck! It like, just steamrolled me, dude. I it was like a religious experience. But uh, the thing that was awesome about it was it was on, you know, the the standard uh, the standard size of a movie screen in uh, you know like nineteen. 19- like 1960s, 1970s. Yeah. Yeah, you know, they were all f- fairly small, but still, hu- you know, still huge. I mean, not considerably larger than like a garage door or something. Yeah. Which is still pretty big. Like if you have a screen. Oh that's, god. Oh, you. you oh no. <laughs> <laughs> See, that didn't kill me. Now, uh, I'm just gonna lie here for a bit. <laughs> Now the the interesting thing that I heard <laughs> was that uh, oh. God damn it, bear! I'm sorry, dog. But, I just got hit. With I a... know. I, you'll be all right. You can't die in this game. No, but uh, basically, I I was reading some fun facts about 2001, and the monolith is. Supposed to be the same size as the screen. The screen now. Yeah. Now, do you remember how the movie starts? Um, blackness. Blackness for like three minutes. As well as the intermission. Yeah, the monolith yeah. is just staring at you in the face. Right in the face, and you don't even know it. I love that. Can Can we talk about like how that's like probably the best thing? The best thing that anyone's ever done. I'm just done. gonna let him hit me because he needs to hit this metal piece. This guy, this guy sucks. No, he's he's actually pretty good. He's not doing what I want him to. That's good for him. Yeah. Um. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I love that. That's aesthetic experience. That's that's just genius filmmaking. It is. That's what art should be. And and he's <laughs> he's challenging you because that whole movie is about getting to a higher level of consciousness. Yeah. And he's con he's just challenging you being stupid he's like it's right here get it like here's your your next step in human consciousness you're staring right in the face and you don't even know it did you ever see uh the uh uh what's it called i think it's what metal metal from uh uh pink floyd that it was written to go along with jupiter and, and beyond the infinite no buddy you have to do that. Yeah? Yeah, because originally uh, Kubrick wanted Pink Floyd to score the movie. Yeah. But... Uh, what, was Queen busy? <laughs> I, I can't remember what the reason was, but they didn't do it. But after it came out, they sco- they released like a EP that was basically just scoring the, the last section. And oh, that's cool. It's awesome, dude. They nail it? Come on, it's it's Floyd. Of course they nail it. It's real nice, dude. Um, that said, I am very happy that Pink Floyd didn't score the movie. Okay. Because I think that the music in, in that is just so perfect. I love the... Uh, there we go. Oof. That's what we wanted. The The classical music... And the 
you know, somewhat ambient noise, like just like noises and tones. Just and, felt right. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's appropriate. It's it's what the movie well, needs. Yeah, well, classical goes in line with the whole last part of it, you know, mm-hmm. in, in that room that he's stuck in, Beyond the Infinite, I suppose. That part is so good. Isn't it, though? Dude, the, when I saw it in the theater, and, you know, like, he... Uh, he puts it. He puts his hand up to reach out for the monolith, like when he's like old, yeah, and, you know, like dying in the bed, or like that, you know, it's very old in the bed. That part, man, that that got me in the theater. <laughs> Something like it was outrageously beautiful about that scene on 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 the monolith, you know, like being projected on the monolith, yeah. Shit, dog. I know. So good. Claire and I are seeing uh, Spirited Away in the same theater. Ooh, that's awesome. Yeah, because I wasn't... Let's see. When when that movie came out, I uh, was not yet into Miyazaki. Really? It's late in the game. Yeah, well, well what year was that? Because I remember I saw my first Miyazaki film uh, in seventh grade. I saw you know, Mononoke. Mm-hmm. And then I didn't watch another one until, like, 2006 or so. Right. Let me check out uh, Spirited Away. I need to get down to this guy's belt. Oh, two, 2001. Get to his belt. Uh, Spirited his Away. And there we go. What was the point I was trying to make with that? What point are you ever trying to make? I don't know. Well, Spir- I guess the point is Spirited Away came out before I first saw a Miyazaki movie. Because I think... I think the first time I saw one was in 02. I think that's when I was in 7th grade or 8th grade or whatever. I, I used to it. watch uh, Totoro all the damn time as a kid. Yeah, yeah, there uh, there were a lot of folks our age who did that in Kiki's Delivery Service. Uh, Ooh, belly piercing. I had never seen... I, st- I still haven't seen Kiki's Delivery Service. Yeah, me either. Again, just another another one of his movies where a little girl has to get a job. Like, that's that's the point. <laughs> I'm starting to think he just thinks that, like, the young people are lazy. <laughs> I, I think he really wanted to write Battle Royale. Yeah, I was, I was yeah. just about to say, he makes really subversive Battle Royale right. films. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> that's actually an interesting way to view his movies through the lens of yeah. Battle Royale. Well, it's about time for me to go. Yeah, I'm about to drop this guy. Uh, it, yeah. Not it, soon it, enough? Not soon enough, Doug. We'll count this as two, 2.75. 2.75 Colossi. Okay, oh. yeah, like, yeah. Let's get out of here. All right. So I'm going to end the... With, with not being able to get on the arm, I'm going to end this with... With um, honorable suicide. Oh yeah. They say they say that the water turns to concrete at this height. Mm. Let's see if the game developers took that into account. It sounds like something a, a Don DeLillo character would say. Not even contemplating suicide, just yeah. like something that that a DeLillo character might say. Right. <laughs> Here we go. Eee! Oh, that was anticlimactic. <laughs> it's okay though. We we can try again. <laughs> I believe I can fly. Concrete. I I can... It's not concrete. Wait till we see any of the flying ones. I really feel like I got ripped off. I think that's how everybody <laughs> feels about this entire episode. <laughs> oh boy, yeah. I have no doubt. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, so, I hope I hope that our our like seven minutes of Shadow of the Colossus discussion was interesting, but that everything else was equally interesting. Yeah, I um, hope so. Um, we wanted some redemption on this. When I jump down and we're gonna stop the cast, it goes right up to sixty FPS. <laughs> of course. But that's redemption for us, and that's the closest we get. Yeah. Well, uh, you guys are going to see this after uh, our stream tonight, mm. but. If for some weird reason, like, immediately you see this, we're streaming tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Playing some Final Fantasy Tactics. Oh, impossibilities. Getting the JPs. Yeah. And, uh, and all these things. 
So, so uh, we'll see you soon, guys. Yep. Uh, keep your video games good and your beer craft. Redemption. Re- Redemption. Redemption. It's like down here. Redemption. Revengeance. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and goodbye. <laughs> see you later, folks. <laughs>